All right, let's do some Venn diagrams. These are a really, really useful tool to solve complicated examples. I got this little joker here, a Venn, Venn diagram of people who understand Venn diagrams, people who don't, I and mean, look, they don't intersect because if you understand them, then you're over here. If you don't, you're over here. Ha, huh? I guess you could sort of. In any case, um, let's look at what a Venn diagram really is. I like it because in Danish, if it, just the word Ven, like V-E-N, actually means friend. So I think of it as a friend diagram. So this right here would be the U. This right here is the total, you know, this is the total sample space here. So this right here would be like the total outcomes here. Uh, actually, I'll just say the U. I'll just say, you know, I'll say U is just a total. Let's say it that way. So we normally write like the total number sort of up at the top. Then you might have people who, you know, belong in A. You might have people who belong in, belong in B. And where these two things are here meet, those are people who belong in both A and B. They're in the intersection. Here is people who are neither. Either A or B. So, I mean, maybe, maybe uh, it's someone who, you know, belongs somewhere else. So we often put this number down here as well. So we might put numbers here, like maybe, you know, five, three, two, maybe this is one. And then, uh, well, the total then will be, let's see, that would be, you know, 11, for example. Let's just say. So these are here might be like the totals here. So maybe I have one here, something like that. So just try to show you. So you could have different number of people who belong in these different things. This could be girls, boys, English, math. It could be whatever. Because I'll, I'll give you some examples so we can start playing with these things here. All right. So um, let's go ahead. We can do three circles as well. There could be three circles. And you can see, ah, this is where A and B are together. Um, this is where it's A and B right here, but not C because C would be over here. Here, if you're in here, that means you're part of A and B and C. So you're in the intersection of all three of them and so on and so on. So let's start thinking about intersection and what that really means. This intersection, what I mean by that is that we're gonna say A and B. That's what this one here means. This right here, this is A and B. So maybe I'll uh, label it here. This means A and B. That means it's the intersection. So in order to be part of this, if I want to shade where A and B are, this is the kind of key thing. I, I like to think of these almost like, um, if you ever use Photoshop and use filters or things like that, or not filters, uh, sorry, even layers. I almost imagine it like that. Like watch, if I say I want who's belonging in A, let me just shade what A is. If I just shaded, because this is A, this is B here. If I just shaded A, it would be all of this, right? This here would be A. And if I just shaded B, let's see here, that would look like this, just so we can agree here. This is A, this is B. If I just shaded B, it would be this. Do you see there's these two different things I'm considering? There's A, there's B. Well, A and B, what that is, that is the intersection. That's where this one, if I put this layer on top of this, it's where they would be shaded in both cases. So I imagine this one right here, sort of, you know, I would move this one on top of this one right here and only look at where the two layers are on top of each other, where there's things shaded both places. And do you notice it would be right here in this intersection? So it would actually only be here. This right here is A and B. It's only this part right here that's shaded, okay? Only the middle here. Okay, don't shade the rest. Just this right here. This is this is A and B. That's what this is. Okay? That's called the intersection. That's why we like to use the word and here, because it's where the two things intersect, and we say it's and. So it's related to the probability stuff we've been doing. We have something else called a union. By the way, I love this one. Look, we have a beaver with an electric guitar. We have a duck with a keyboard. And if you have the intersection of them, look, it's a platypus with a keytar. It's so clever. All right, let's do the union. What does that mean? This is A union B like this. This means or. This is A or B. Now, it's very easy to get into this club. You either have to be part of A or you're part of B. So watch carefully then. If I wanted to shade... Anyone who is in part of A gets shaded. So anyone who is in A, watch, I'm just going to shade A here. This is just A, right? This is anyone who is in A is this right here, right? Anyone here, this is A. And if you're in B, well, then you're over here, also including the middle. So there you go. All right. So this is what I've shaded. I've shaded A or B. It's very easy to be in that club, so to speak. 
But I wanted to show you something interesting. Or maybe you don't find it interesting, but I do. Um, what about, do you remember this combined events equation here? We had a probability of A or B. We had that it was the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. I want to kind of explain using a Venn diagram why that is. I think this might help Venn diagrams make more sense. Look, we're saying if we're doing the probabilities, and now we're counting up probabilities of being somewhere, this is what A or B looks like. It's everything shaded. So what we're saying is we would count up what's the probability of getting A. We would count up what's the probability of getting B. But do you see what the problem is? We've counted this middle part twice. Does it make sense? Like if we counted all these people here, and we found that probability here. We found that probability over here of just B. Do you notice we've counted the middle people twice? That's why we take them away. Do you notice that this here? That's why we remove one times the intersection. I mean, this is sort of how I like to think of it. Is that you know we've we've had the intersection here, and we just remove it once. So that's why. And if there was no place where they're the same, that's where we recover this equation um, from mutually exclusive, right? So that's where we get just the probability of A plus B. I don't know if that helps, but I just like to think of it, hey, well, look, we counted these people twice. That's why we have to remove them once. That sort of explains where that equation came from. Maybe. All right, let's try to draw or shade the following. So what if I'm trying to do, remember what A primed means? It means not A. So I'm trying to say, where does not A meet, so where does it intersect with not B? Well, maybe let's try to just draw what not A looks like. Maybe we'll do it a different color here. So not A, what would that look like? So just in case we're trying to look at it, here is A, here's B. Not A would be this. It would be everything, you know, everything here shaded like this. This would be not A. Does that make sense? This here would be not A. And not B, if I want to shade that one, that'd be like this and like this right here, except I would shade everything else. Does that make sense? If this here would be not B, I'm just trying to shade it here. My shading is pretty awful, but I think you get the idea. This here would be not B. Well, where do these two right here meet? Like, where is the intersection? Do you notice they never meet on this part, so that for sure won't be shaded. This over here for sure won't be shaded. Notice the middle won't be shaded. So if I shade not this and not this and not this, well, I'm shading everything else. So does it make sense to you then that it would be this right here, or just the outside parts basically? So I'm just shading, just shading this right here. So only the outside basically. So this is like a way of getting no one who's part of A or B. This is this neither A or B, you could say it that way. So this right here is what I'm shading. This is the shading of not A or not B. All right, let's do another example maybe just to hopefully help it make some more sense. Um, here, what's shaded here? So here's the question. We've shaded this little piece right here. How in the world can I do that? Well, does it make sense? It looks like it's something related to not A because if you look, it's like uh, everything except for A. So it makes sense it's probably not A. But if I shaded not A, that would look like See, that would just be all of this, right? So it's clearly not as simple as just saying not A. It's not just that. There's got to be more to it. So this is not A, so I've got part of it, and then I've shaded everything. But I also want to only include the stuff. So the stuff that's here, that's also included in B. So that's why, watch, if I do just B, if I did just B, that would be this right here shaded. You notice it'll be where this one right here, sorry, this one right here meets this one right here. That's the only way to get them on top of each other. So you could say, this is not maybe so simple. These can actually be pretty hard. I would say, ah, that's why this is not A and it's also B. These take a bit of practice, you know, to sort of figure out, but that's what this is. This is the, yeah, you could say it's not A, because that's what this is, and where that meets, because this is the end. Remember that means and here. So this is where not A and B, we could say. Not A and where it intersects B, right? That's where not A meets B. They only meet at this part right here on the right, not in the middle here, because that was not shaded here. So that's just, that's a way to look at it.
All right, let's actually do an example of these. Like this in here with Legos, <laughs> the firewalk. I have kids, so every time I step on Legos, I feel like this. But all right, so I've just invented some sort of question right here. We have uh, a class of 40 students. We've got 34 who like dinosaurs. We've got 20 who like Legos. We've got two who hate both dinosaurs and Legos. Whoever that is, they're totally lame. Um, <laughs> how many students like both dinosaurs and Legos? I just made a, you know, Venn diagram for D for dinosaur, L for Lego. Maybe it helps to fill things in just to try to figure out what's going on. So I know there's a total of 40 students. So I'm going to write down the number 40 up here. Okay. I also know there's two who hate both dinosaurs and Legos. That means there's two of them who are sitting over here. I don't know if that makes any sense. Now, what I'm trying to figure out is, what do I put in here? I know that the total, the people who live here and live here, I know those add up to 34, but I don't really know what to do here. So I've got a little sort of pro tip for you is give them letters, call it like A, and maybe I'll call this one B, and I'll call this one here C. And I'm going to make myself some little equations of things that make sense. Watch carefully. If 34 people like dinosaurs, that must mean that the people who live here and here must be adding up to 34. So I'm going to say A plus B equals 34. Did that make any sense? I'm just writing what I know. I know that A and B together will add up to 34. And I know that 20 like Legos. So that means I know that B plus C, see the total of people who live in Legos here? B plus C, well, that'll equal 20. And I know something else, it turns out. Because otherwise, I'm a little bit stuck here. But I know something else. If there's a total of 40 people, and two of them are totally lame and don't like anything, how many people then are belonging in A plus B plus C? Does that make sense? That's 38. So you see, you have to be a little bit of a detective and figure out these clues. All right, can we use this to figure out something? Yeah, I can. If I know that B plus C equals 20, do you see how I can then say, all right, I'm going to make this then 20, because that's what B plus C is. Therefore, A plus 20 must equal 38. Therefore, what can I conclude about A? A must be 18. Aha! So now I know that A is 18. Yay! Right away, if I know that A is 18, does it make sense now I can figure out B? So since A is 18, I can now figure out B. I know that, uh, well, let's see. A plus B equals 34, right? But A was 18, so 18 plus B equals 34. So I'm going to fix up my B there. Uh, so does that make any sense? Therefore, I can say that B must be, let's see, uh, 34 minus 18, so that'll be 16. So these are some of the little, This is, I think the hard part about this is just figuring out your whole Venn diagram. Once you have that sorted out, the rest is okay. All right, well, I also know then that B plus C must be 20. Do you see that? So because of that, let's see, therefore, um, I'll say that, well, let's see, B plus C equals 20. I know what B is. B is 16, so C must be 4. Therefore, this has a 4. Now, double check. Does 16 plus 4 really add up to 20? Yes. Does 20 plus 18 really add up to 38? Yes. Does 18 plus 16 add up to 34? Yes. I've done it right. And this plus this plus this plus this equals 40. I've got it solved now. You see, that was actually the hard part was figuring out what goes where. Some people have a really good intuition for it. Some people are really bad at it. That's why I just want to show you. If you're really bad at it, just write A, B, C, write down some equations, be a detective. You'll figure it out, hopefully. All right, now we have everything we need. How many students like both dinosaurs and Legos? Ah, those are the people in the intersection. All right, so that's just 16 students. See how easy that was? Once we knew, once we sort of solved the Venn diagram, this is going to be really easy to do. So, all right, so we got uh, 16 students who like both of them. Great. Now, the question, the next one will be, what's the probability that a student likes dinosaurs given that they like Legos? Let's use our conditional probability equation. Remember how that one goes? Conditional probability, probably of A, given that B already happened. Right, that's what this means. This means given. So this is a probability of A, given that B happened. That's what this really means, okay? Whoops, happened. Just to remind you, that's the definition of conditional probability. So probability of A, given that B already happened, is going to be probability of A and B over probability of B. That's just a generic equation. Well, let's use it.
I want the probability of, not A, I want it of dinosaurs given Lego. You see, I've just got to convert it to what I need. So probability of dinosaur given that they like Legos equals, well, it's going to be the probability of both of them together. So probability of dinosaurs and Legos divided by the probability of Legos. It's always this and this over this. That's what I do here. Well, can I figure these out? Do I know the probability of dinosaur and Lego? Well, yeah, people who live in dinosaur and Lego, that is 16 people. Out of how many people total? 40. See that? Now I'm going to divide that by probability of people liking Lego. Well, how many people like Legos overall? Well, there's actually 20 of them who like Legos. So it's 20 over 40. What happens when I divide a fraction by a fraction? I multiply by the reciprocal, so that means it's 16 over 40 times 40 over 20. Notice what happens now? The 40s cancel out, which is nice. So I'm, now I'm left with uh, 16 over 20. Let's see, they both divide by 4, don't they? So that gives me 4 over 5. Yeah, I, I guess I'm done. I mean, it's 4 over 5. Uh, what's that? Let's see, 1 over 5 is 0.2, so 4 of those is going to be 0.2. So there we go. So this is my answer. It depends if you want to sort of do it on your calculator or do the exact value, but it's going to be 4 over 5, or you could say it's 80% likely. Right? So that's sort of another way to say it's 80% likely. So in other words, it's quite likely. Now you could have done this by just looking at the uh, Venn diagram as well. You could have just done it by saying, hey, given that they already like Legos, in other words, we're only counting these people. I just want to show you, you could have done it by just using the diagram. If you thought about it carefully, if you only know that they like Legos, I mean, you ignore everyone else. You only count these 16 and 4 people here. Okay, You only count these ones. And you'd say, all right, well, there's 20 of them, right? And of those, how many people like dinosaurs? Well, it's 16 out of the 20. Do you see you end up with 16 over 20 right away, which is 4 out of 5? That's just another way to think about it. It all depends how you like to do these.